Welcome to Upon Walton Farm, and we're getting ready for Easter. And one of my favorite things to have for Easter is a leg of lamb. I love roast, roast lamb at Easter time. One of my dear Jewish friends, she always does a big leg of lamb for Passover. And it's such a great meal for Passover or Easter. It just is wonderful. And I have this behemoth leg of lamb. This is actually seven and a half pounds. It's really big for a leg of lamb. And what I've done to start with is I make slits. And I would say I go about half an inch in with a paring knife. Um, and you don't want to pierce through the other side. So you want to go halfway through. And I've studied this with one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm putting the sixth um, piece of garlic. And I like to use some fresh rosemary for this. And I put it into the hole and then, you know, do my best closing it back up. I've already seasoned the underside with uh, dried rosemary, salt, and pepper. That's it. And I'm going to show you a mustard, I guess you'd say glaze or paste that we're going to put over it. But first we're going to do this. So this is going to go in and I like to put it with the rosemary. Um, Julia Child has an excellent recipe in her book, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, where you don't stud the roast because she puts chopped garlic into her mustard paste, which is also very traditional. I think this infuses the meat with a lot of nice, good garlic flavor. And I don't think it's overly garlic. I've used probably th three large cloves that I've cut in half, maybe two that I've cut in half. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, three cloves cut in half and with rosemary, and you certainly can use dried rosemary. And then salt and pepper it. I don't do anything to the fat. I leave it all on there. I do actually like the lamb fat quite. Um, some people find it too pungent and you can take off the thicker layers of it, but it really does baste it and protect it while it's cooking. And it's nowhere near as bad for you because most of the lamb we get in this country is Australian and it is organic and it is grass fed. That's all lamb um, sheep are going to eat is grass. They're not, you can't force feed them anything really. Um, and it's unfortunate that lamb isn't appreciated more in this country because it, it wouldn't, the price wouldn't be so astronomical for it, or you would only see it on sale around, you know, Passover, Easter or other holidays. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a mustard paste. And all this is is a really good Dijon mustard. And I have a good keeping two tablespoons. And it will depend on the size, but two tablespoons is pretty good. And then I'm going to put about a tablespoon of olive oil into that and stir it. I just use a spoon to apply it, actually. I don't use a brush. If you read a lot of different books, they're going to talk about using a brush. I don't think this that's... I think it's easier to just use a spoon. And into that, I'm going to add a tablespoon each of fresh thyme. Sorry, not fresh thyme. Of dried thyme and dried crushed rosemary. So a good tablespoon of thyme and then the rosemary. And if the rosemary is on the big side, just crush it in your hand. I always do this. I think it's, it releases more of the oil. Then you don't get these big dried flakes too when you go to carve it and somebody gets them on a plate and has to push it aside. This way, I do think it's better to just crush it. I need a little more. I don't quite have a heaping tablespoon. And if you like a little more rosemary and more thyme, if you go beyond a tablespoon, that's fine. It really is. It really is to your taste of this, what you're doing with this paste. And just give it a good stir, and that's all it is. <clears throat> Some people put the salt and pepper directly into the, the paste. I think it's better to directly salt and pepper the meat. And so I just put dollops of it all over the lamb, and I paint it with the spoon. And this recipe could not be more easy because really what's going to happen is it's going to cook. I'm putting it in a 350 degree oven. It's on the bottom of my, of my roasting oven in the auger. 
which is probably a little higher than 350, but if you're using a regular oven, um, 350 degrees in the middle. Um, and because of the paste that protects it, you don't need to sear it. I am doing it on a rack, if you could see. And I'm going to talk about that after I paint it. And all you do is spread the mustard all over it, work it in, because you'll be surprised how much fat is going to come off this. And I do think it is worthwhile to baste it in the fat. After the first half hour of cooking, I am going to add some onions and carrots to the pan. And that's going to help give me a delicious sauce. Also, I'm going to use them as a garnish because I, oh, some recipes say to just chop up an onion and chop up a carrot and maybe even celery I've seen. And then you discard it at the end. I'm like, well, why discard those delicious vegetables? They're going to have a lot of flavor in them. And so I do serve them with the lamb. With this, because it's for Easter, one of my favorite things to serve, of course, is asparagus in a hollandaise. So we'll be having asparagus. And a mashed potato. I, I, because you get a really good gravy from this, it's nice to have a mashed potato every now and then. But there, there are several French recipes where you do the leg of lamb on top of already thinly sliced potatoes. So that's all there is to it. To it. And if you've seen what I've done, I'm using my favorite Staub roasting pan, which isn't that deep. I don't want it to sit in the fat. So I'm putting it, I literally just took um, a baking rack um, that I put, you know, cookies on and I put it on top of that. The other thing which I've done is if your leg of lamb is big and sticks over the size of your roasting pan, I just put a little tin foil at the bone end and that's fine. For an aga, I put the larger side in first because that's where the heat is concentrated in the aga. So I'm going to put it in. I'm going to put it in for 350 and it's just going to set there after a half hour i'm pulling it out and i'm going to add some vegetables so i'll see you back when we're ready to add some vegetables i'm going to set a timer and we'll be back now it's time to check on that gorgeous leg of lamb it's starting to smell good so i think it's going to be just right and just about the right time to add some vegetables. And so I'm gonna put it up here on the August so you can see. Mm, it looks like it's been doing quite good. Ah, yes, very good. And it's browning all over very nicely, okay? And this is a good stage to add the vegetables. And I have these gorgeous carrots. I didn't, they were so clean, I didn't have to peel them. These were when we did our field trip to the um, farmer's market. Um, I got these and they look really good. And so I'm just putting them into the pan. It looks like I might need to add a little water. And if you're adding vegetables, I would advise, you know, add about a cup of water at the most. And I'm just tossing them in. I want the thicker ones on the other side. You know, I do, I actually have a big V-rack, but I actually find this easier to use um, and deal with and to clean. So that's my little trick. And so I'm just adding, oh, I'm adding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten small onions. I just think they're delicious. I also got those at the farmer's market. They looked wonderful. And that one is not going to get used. <laughs> and here we go. And I think I am going to add roughly, and make sure it's warm water that you're adding. I'm adding about, I'm actually only adding maybe a half cup, 
just so things don't burn. And it goes back into the oven now at 350 for an hour and test it with the meat thermometer. And I will give you the meat increments uh, with the temperatures, the FDA guidelines for uh, rare, medium rare, um, well done, etc. cetera, um, in the notes on this episode. So see you back in a few. Now the leg of lamb is out of the oven. It looks great. It's resting here covered under tin foil. So um, I recommend re letting it rest for 10 to 20 minutes. Probably the best thing is 15 to 20. You do want all the juices to redistribute. It looks beautiful. I'll show you when it's done resting. What I've been doing is because I added water to the pan and it was on a rack, it's not so much that I need to deglaze the pan. It's already really been done in the cooking process. I am reducing the cooking liquid by half. And so it's smelling great. And I have a roux cooking here. And my roux is two and a half tablespoons of butter to two tablespoons of flour. I do always err on having a little bit more butter. I want to make sure I get a nice liaison with my sauce. And so as I'm getting ready, I realize I need to strain what I'm reducing. So I'm getting a strainer out right now. Because you have all sorts of little bits, you have flecks of herbs and things. And if you want a beautiful sauce, all you need to do is strain it before you put it into the roux. And it's an easy thing to do, and I think it's worthwhile doing. So that is what I'm gonna do right now. I'm gonna do this off the heat. Um, and the whole time I was reducing this, I was scraping with a wooden spoon to get any delicious residue off the bottom of the pan because that is where your flavor is. And I'm doing this specifically because you're going to see most recipes for when you make a gravy out of a lamb, you know, you have beef stock. Well, I want it to taste like lamb, so I'm using every little bit I can. And so all I'm doing, straining it, it's worth doing, and then we whisk really quickly now. So immediately go to a whisk and it's going to become a little thick at first and then we're going to add the beef stock. But this prevents lumps. You know, everybody was like wondering how, why do we have lumpy gravy? Well, it's because it wasn't, and see immediately I had to put it on to lower heat. It literally thickened that quickly. So now I'm putting a good two and a half cups of beef broth into the mixture. And again, I'm whisking vigorously the entire time. And you won't get any lumps. The flour and butter really does ensure that. And I will also say there was a good deal of lamb fat left. I did degrease as much as possible. And the way this looks, I don't think I'm gonna need the extra bowl actually. I always have an extra bowl out because if I make a lot of sauce or gravy, it's more than just going into the sauce bowl. What I did in the meantime, and they're in the warming oven, the 200 degree oven of the aga, I took the carrots and onions out. The carrots, I tossed in a little bit of butter and I sprinkled just some um, dried dill on them. Dill and carrots are such a delicious combination. I love them. I had them at a restaurant that really, it was Greek. It was, a, it was just a really, really good diner in New Jersey owned by a Greek family and they always serve roasted carrots with dill. And I just fell in love with them and I, I started doing my carrots like that all the time. It gives that just hint of something special and turns, even a bit, you know, my carrots are delicious just with butter. You know what I mean? They really are. But you just add a sprinkle of dill and all of a sudden, ooh, there's something unique in them. And so we just whisk this and it's gonna thicken. And we're gonna come back in a second and I'm gonna show you everything. Well, here is that gorgeous leg of lamb and it came out perfectly. And I've just garnished it simply with some fresh rosemary because that's what it's been flavored with. And I love to use the herbs that I've cooked the meats with 
And I did pour a little bit of the sauce over. It just makes it glisten. There's that lovely gravy, the carrots with dill, and the beautifully roasted onions that all went into the same pan. I only used basically one pan other than making some delicious mashed potatoes and some asparagus, fresh asparagus. Perfect thing for spring lamb, ideal for your Easter or Passover table. Bon appétit.